Maria. <laughs> Welcome home, Erica. We Almost. You. Thank you. Thank you. Where's everybody Hi, else? Hi, Hi, everybody else. Who else is coming? The whole fam, Danley. Nobody <laughs> wants to miss your latest triumph. But I thought, Dimitri, said that you were on a, a very romantic second honeymoon. We are. Oh, we are. But it's here in New York, and we've been having such a fabulous time that I, I think we're just going to stay on our honeymoon forever. Ooh, <laughs> the eternal honeymoon. <laughs> it's a great idea. Hey, I'm glad you guys can make it. You'll make the place look good, that's for sure. Could <laughs> you excuse us for a second? I just have to talk to Dixie. Excuse me. Sure. Great news. I just talked to the bank. Janet cast a check this afternoon in Center City. Honey, she's out of Pine Valley. Without any, with, with any luck, she's out of our lives for good. Anymore, really. It is terrible to be madly in love and then forced to be apart. Do you know what he did? Dimitri sent me roses at every stop during the tour. Roses? Oh. That's very romantic. When was the last time you sent me roses? Speaking of the tour, Erica, um, what's her name said that you had a problem with the speech for tonight? Oh, I only needed to demand a total rewrite, that's all. I mean, really, Tad, that first version was just so totally pedestrian and lackluster and patronizing, and I will not talk down to the audience. Yeah, but you do know your lines for this evening, right? Well, as soon as I get my rewrite, I will know my lines. No, no, I'm a very quick study. Just a second. What do you mean, as soon as? You, you don't have it already? I... Well, oh, I, here it comes, I think. Here's your rewrite, Miss Kane. What's he doing here? Let me see this. Erica, Dell works in Orsini's public relations department. What? He wrote your speech. Dell, this is great. Thank you. Uh, can I see that? Yeah. You hired this hack? who helped Kendall Hart to conspire to write that unauthorized biography of me? You hire this creature without principles who has no ethics? No, Erica, he's a good writer. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, take a look. I would rather have my lips sewn together than to utter one word of this lousy speech. No, not in this lifetime, Martin. Not in this lifetime. I have everything under control. No, you don't, and that's the problem. This is my show, and all I'm asking you to do is read the speech that Dell wrote for you. Come on, Erica, just read it. Why would I bother to do that? I have no intention of, of uttering one word, let alone one syllable. That's that. That's final. Okay, let me spell it out for you. You are our celebrity spokesperson, the undisputed star of our new advertising campaign. Yes, you've got that right. Dell is a writer. No, correction. Edmund is a writer. Dell is an unprincipled hat. Dell was hired to do a job. You were hired to do a job. He does his. You do yours. The boss is happy. Any questions? I am a professional. I always do my job. Have you got any questions? Dell is a professional, too, Erica. And Dell never had that book published. I also apologize and return the money that Dimitri gave me. The payoff money. He gave it back. Now, you're on his side, too. You're a traitor. You're all a bunch of traitors. You know, you're nothing but a nest of vipers. Oh, Dimitri's here. Oh, Dimitri. Yeah. Dimitri, darling. Oh. Look at you. Oh, I missed you so much. Oh, I missed you, too. I missed you so much. And at last, someone who understands my side. Darling, please tell them I am not ever going to utter one word. I will not read. I will not speak any of the drivel that Del Henry wrote Erica, for Erica, this is not about uh, choosing uh, sides. It's not a contest. All I want you to do is give the speech. I'm about to walk out. Look, look, you Tad, do, Tad, and Tad, I Tad, will... Would you give us just a few minutes alone, Erica and me? Darling, they are ganging up on me. They want me, all of them, they want me to violate my ethics. No, I don't. All I want you to do is give We'll straighten speech. this out. Del wrote the speech you're supposed to give tonight? 
Yes, and I'm really not going to say a word of it. I can't. I can't possibly do that. He wrote a, a pack of lies, a book full of lies and filthy innuendos about me and my family, uh, people I care about. And now they just, they want me just to be his mouthpiece? No, no way that's ever going to happen. <laughs> Darling, Dell was desperate to pay his medical bills. Now, he's apologized and returned the money. Maybe it's time to forgive and forget. I don't believe this. Am I the only person left with principles? Dell came to Wildwind while you were gone. He felt he owed us one because of the book. He thought we should know that Kendall's probably up to something, revving up for what he called a kamikaze attack. What kind of kamikaze attack? And nothing specific. He was only picking up on her vibes. The point is, Dell acknowledges Kendall's problems. Went out of his way to, uh, to warn us. So maybe, for Tad and Dixie's sake, you could just befriend him and read his speech? Look, Kendall Hart doesn't even exist for me anymore, but if she's going to cause any more trouble... No, no, it, we're safe from Kendall, Erica. <clears throat> Dell, I understand that you paid a visit to Wildwind, and you said that Kendall Hart was up to something. Is that what you said? I thought it was only fair to tell you. What exactly is she up to? I told Dimitri everything I know. I highly doubt that. Dell, if you are truly interested in having us forgive you, if you regret having written that pack of lies about me, and moreover, if you want me to sell you by delivering this pack of drivel you've written for me, then you will tell us, all of us, right now, exactly what kind of kamikaze attack is Kendall Hart planning. I wish I could be more specific about what Kendall's up to, but I can't. Can't or won't? If my brother knew anything, Erica, I'm sure he would tell you. Ken it's just a feeling, Erica. Kendall has some scheme up her sleeve, but she's playing it close to the vest. That is all I know. He's hiding something. Erica, about the speech. Whatever she's plotting, he's part of it. I don't think so, Erica. Don't defend him. All right, let's just give it a rest, okay? Look, I'm telling the truth. You know what I know. Well, I certainly feel sorry for you because anyone who gets close to that viper gets bitten. Well, that's very true. And Erica does speak from experience, Del. She has done unspeakable, unforgivable things to me and everyone in my family. She has betrayed each and every one of you in her own way. You expect me to just forget that? All right, hold it, hold it, hold it. Time out. But let me remind you all, this is a very important corporate function, not a three-ring family circus. Kendall's not all bad. Excuse me? Erica's a long way from seeing anything good about Kendall, Dell. And frankly, so am I. Yeah, it makes three of us. I think it's unanimous. Great. Can we get back to the program? Are you satisfied? Well, it's in my opinion that Kendall has redeeming qualities. That's all. I am disgusted. Dell, Kendall paints herself as a poor, innocent victim. It's a part she excels at. I am not saying that she is innocent. But she's not as evil as everyone thinks. Single-handedly, she came between Dimitri and his only child. Are you saying that, I mean, Anton is lost to our family. Are you saying that's not evil? I call it unfortunate. Can you deny that deliberately coming between a parent and a child is evil? No, I can't. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> good evening. My name is Thaddeus Martin. I am proud to be the president and CEO of Orsini Vineyards. We're very, very happy to have you here tonight. So with no further ado, I guess we should start the evening with a glass of our finest Chardonnay, if you will, and a toast to our special guest, our celebrity spokesperson just back from a national tour. I am very, very proud and honored to present the unique, the incomparable, and the irrepressible Eric Kane. Ah, here, here. Thank you, Ted. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure to be here with you this evening. It's an honor to speak to a group of connoisseurs such as yourselves. A group of men and women who really enjoy having the finest life has to offer. 
In that vein, I was supposed to give a speech this evening that was written for me by someone who has not the vaguest idea of who I am. And since that's not my style, I say, the heck with it. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and fellow connoisseurs, this evening you are in for a taste of 100% unadulterated Erica Kane. Orsini Wine is like a great family friend, always present at every special occasion, bringing life and body and sparkle to the civilized art of celebration. Join me, won't you, in the second of many toasts this evening. Who loves not women, wine, and song remains a fool his whole life long. <laughs> <laughs> to the good life with Orsini. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely marvelous. You were great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. That was a wonderful speech. You were terrific. Thank you, Perry. I was marvelous. You wasn't were I? marvelous, but there was nothing wrong with Dell's speech. Thank you, Ken. You're welcome. <laughs> 53rd Street in Manhattan, outside Nexus. Crowds have gathered to gawk at celebrities attending the private Orsini wine bash inside. Erica Kane is the featured speaker. Handsome CEO Tad Martin and his lovely wife Dixie host the cream of New York's high society wine world. Everyone who's in. Good life with Orsini. Yes. 